Grace and peace to you. I'm Cynthia Brooks from Fire and Glory International Ministries. And as I always say, it is a joy to be before you. You know, we're living in a time where people are kind of forgetting uh, what the Word of God actually say or to even engage the Word of God in our everyday life. We're trying to figure things out on our own or we're going by what is the popular belief for the moment, what is the trendy things when it comes to how to live life. You cannot uh, get your advice of how to live life from, from your peers. You know, God has given us the Bible. We used to say basic instructions before leaving earth. The Bible, the word of God that will direct you and keep you in this hour. If you don't know anything else, you need to understand what the word of God say so that you will be fully equipped, intelligent, wise, and with understanding to know how to walk in these dark and evil days. Because we're at a time now that we are seeing death, sicknesses, war, war rumors of war, conflicts, uh, murder, you, you name it, we're seeing it. We're seeing a complete breakdown in the family unit. We're seeing husbands who should marry their wives, who stand before uh, a judge or a minister, and of course God, and profess that they will be with that woman and love and cherish her until death do they part. You see women who stand in front of a minister or a judge and God and profess before him that they will love that person and honor him, respect him until their death. And you know, when it gets down to it, we don't see husbands honor, honoring, cherishing, or respecting their wives. And we don't see the same thing from the wives. You know, and, and so we're watching a breakdown of the family. And who else is watching this? The children are. So the Bible talks about you cannot, um, the, the strong man, the, the, the enemy cannot go and destroy a, or, or or, or plummet a house unless he binds the strong man of the house. That's the head of the house. And so we're seeing a household where there are no heads. We're seeing households where there are heads and they're more concerned about playing games instead of raising children. We're seeing where they have no respect for their wives, talking to their wives any kind of way, kids, kids hearing things they should never hear. And many think this is okay. You know, the bad thing about it, we are hurting our seed, our children. Satan is after our seed. And so we have to understand what is really going on with us today and this time today. You know, I love how Paul wrote to Timothy, Timothy and we see this in 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I want to read this and I want to kind of, die, you know, kind of go along with it so we get a great understanding of it. He says, I charge you. And this is not saying I recommend this or, you know, I, if you get time, follow this, Timothy. Of You know, if it feels good to you, follow this. No, he said, I charge you. Therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who would judge the living and the dead at his appearing, and his kingdom. Preach the word. You know, you have households now where where, where the, the, the ministers and the preachers who live in a house who may have a spouse who have turned back from the Lord or never was a part of the, hopefully, um, you know, they, they were might have been, I don't know. I don't know what's better. If you never knew God or you knew him and just threw him aside. But they have, may have spouses who don't really know the Lord that well. And those spouses will say anything they want to say without any reverence to God or to the man or woman of God that they live with. We are seeing this thing in a whole scale manner where there is no honor or, and there is no respect of God. Anything anybody want to say, they're saying it and they're doing it. And this is what he says, preach the word. He's telling Timothy, preach the word. And this, this charge does not just go to Timothy. It goes to every single believer. And especially to those who are called in the body of Christ to be leaders. And just because you're a leader does not mean that you won't go through trials. You are going to go through trials too. Because just like the Bible said, these light afflictions, which are but for a moment, Work for, work for far more exceeding weight of glory that's going to come after all of this. You may have to go through some stuff in this life and this life and it's 
difficult as the weight of persecution is, think about the weight of the glory. Oh my goodness, think about the glory that's coming after this. The weight of any trial that we could ever go to, through has nothing, does not even compare with the weight of the glory that God has prepared for us. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. There are times that you are not going to feel like preaching. There are times that you're not going to feel like evangelizing. There are times you're not going to feel like counseling. There are times that you don't want to go to the lost or the broken. You don't want to go. You don't feel like there are times in your life that you may be up under duress. You may be up under pressure. Things are going wrong in your life. Everything around you is breaking. But we're still charged. Preach the word. In season, that's when it's all good. That's when everything is working well. That's when everything is in place. In season, be ready in season and out of season. So, you know, in season is when it's just, it's all good. Everything is working according to where I want to. Out of season means everything is in chaos all around me. Our country may be in chaos. Our families may be going through stuff. And God said, preach the word anyway. You don't stop preaching the word just because the, the atmosphere isn't good. The vibes of the people is not right. You don't stop preaching the word. Preach the word with power. Convince. Convince people. Look, you're walking the wrong way. Look, the way you're going is not going to lead to eternal life. It will lead to eternal hell. You need to turn around and reset yourself. We have to convince them any means possible. We have to convince them. That's what the word of God is for. That's what we preach for. That's what we live for. We are screaming. Stop, stop. Look at what you're doing. Wake up. It is time for you to see what the word of God is saying. He is real. Look at all of these things in the world. If I could scream it out right now, I would. Look at all this stuff happening in the world right now. Everything that's going down. Are we paying attention to these last day events? Or are we still thinking, eh, everything's going to return to normal soon. This is your normal. You know what your normal is? Not knowing what things are going to happen. Not understanding, hey, we're at this, this 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 time in history and it's not looking good. And you know what? We are at the time now. If you want to look at where we are, it's not going to get any better. But it doesn't matter if it get any better. Because if you know Jesus Christ, my goodness, he give you peace that transcends all human understanding. No man can give you what God can give you. I mean, it's all good when you talk about you know Jesus because he give you a joy, a joy inside of you that bubbles up and that joy will keep you. He give you wisdom to show you how to walk and maneuver during these dark days. He give you love to love the unlovable. Joy, peace, love. That's what God gives us. Therefore, we do not fall under pressure. We do not fall when things are not good. We don't fall. We actually become, we become people of strength because we are people of faith. And we love those who have not yet had an opportunity to know God. We love them. We love them enough to tell them the truth. We love them enough to try to help them. Amen. Rebuke. Sometimes you got to hurt their feelings. Sometimes you got to tell them, listen, this word is going to hurt you today. But you know what? I love you enough to tell you the truth. Because, you know, the sweet words of a friend is not always going to help you. You want to tell the person the truth. If someone is walking around with, with toilet paper hanging out the back of their, 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 their pants, and they're walking down the hall, and I've seen this too. And they're walking, say, into a restaurant or something, or walking out, out of the bathroom, and there's toilet paper stuck on their clothes or on the shoes. Do you know how many people they'll walk past who won't say a word to them? That's not love. You know what? Because people are like, well, it's not my business. I'm not getting into it. I'm not going to say anything. Say something. How would you feel if you're walking around? And, and you have toilet paper stuck in your pants or, 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 you know, something out of place. You know, love people enough to tell them to get out of that place of fear. Like, well, I'm not going to be embarrassed. They may not like me telling them. Oh, they will appreciate it. They will appreciate it. Trust you me. 
exhort. That means to encourage them, build them up, encourage people. If you have to rebuke a person, please make sure you turn around and build them up. Make sure you encourage them, give them an encouraging word, how they can now, okay, this is where, this is where you are, but this is where you need to go now. This is how moving forward, this is how you can walk now and be in a good place. It says, with all patience or long suffering, we do these things with patience. People don't always answer the call or understand what you're saying when you're saying it. You may have to talk to them a few more times or be patient. They may even say, I don't know what you're talking about. With an attitude. Don't you get an attitude too? Be patient. Let patience have its perfect work. Let, let, let patience do its perfect work. That you may be complete or mature, lacking nothing. Let patience step in on your life. This is how we are going to be a blessing to this world. Not by judging, but by showing people their problems if they don't know, or telling them if they don't know, and then build them up. Tell them that this is how you need to walk. What good is it to tell a person, you know what, you just, you just, you, you, you just too much, you all over, you all over the place. You're just a hot mess. You're just breaking the laws and you don't ever build them up. How would they know? Some people don't know the way. Some people don't know the way. Everybody didn't come up in church. Everybody didn't come. And I'm not even saying be picky, but when you see that people are walking the wrong way, do you not say anything? If you see someone, there was a lady uh, that was on this bridge. I don't even know if, she, if there was any alarms on the bridge or anything. And the bridge was going up. And I don't know if she knew it was going up or not. But before she knew it, she was up in the air. She was going up in the air. And she lost her life. Now, I don't know if anybody saw her on the bridge and said, Lady, get off the bridge. Lady, get off the bridge. We have watched people put their put themselves in, in harm's way by jumping on, on the train tracks and pulling people off the train tracks so that the train don't hit them. We've watched that. That's love. That's love. I'm sure those people would think about it. It's like, they need help. I need to save them. Well, that's what the world, the world is at that place right now. The world needs help. We need to save them. Nobody, I'm telling you, nobody will opt for eternal damnation if they really understood what that meant. If we know the answer, let's give it to them. With patience. We gotta be patient with people. We can't just throw them away. Well, I told them before and let them go to No, patience. You know, if you, like I said one time before, I was telling someone, you know, I, I, I've never fished, but I have watched people fish. And it takes patience when you go fishing. It takes patience when you go on hunting. But, Fishing, I really like, because with fishing, once they throw the bait out on the on the um, on the fishing rod, and, and the bait is at the end of the string, they have to wait until the fish bite. And if it's a large fish, it's going to take some skills to to reel that fish in. But it is worth it at the end. It might take a little work. They, you know, reel, then they pull the reel back, and then they wind up the reel again, and they pull the fish in a little further, and then they stop, and then they run it again. And I've watched them do that. You know, the prize is getting the fish. Jesus compares this even with his disciples. He says, go, go fishing. This is what we are called to do. Go fishing. As we see the days approaching now, we see things getting so tough now in the world. We need to understand what that means to go fishing. We're fishing for the prize. And that is for the life of men and women so that they would make it and have eternal life. It's worth everything you could ever do. And it said, with all long, long suffering and teach them. Now, after you get them in, after they come into the fold, teach them. Show them how to walk. Show them how to talk. Show them how to live by the word of God and hopefully by your example. But we, should, we have to 
Take time with people, loving people enough to not just say, oh, well, you know, you're, you're baptized now and, you know, okay, you have the Holy Spirit now and, and so I'm done with you. No, now you have to teach them. Make disciples. That's what Jesus sent the people out to do. His, he told his disciples, go and make disciples and teach them all the things I taught you. Show them how to live. Don't let them live empty lives. Don't let them live, li live lives that, they, you know, okay, they don't know what to do with their lives. You know, there's so many places where people go to church and they just get involved and get all caught up in the music and get all caught up in that, that drama. And, you know, I have nothing against worship music. I have nothing against praise music. I have nothing against expressing yourself, nothing whatsoever. But if you're not teaching them anything, you're not doing them a favor. They should be made disciples so they can go out and fish as well. This is what we're all about. And it says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. When people are not taught correctly, they will run after people who would say what they want them to say. They will run after all the wrong people who would say or tell them things that has nothing to do with their spiritual life, with growth in Christ. What we want to do is for to see them grow up in Jesus Christ. Amen. And they would turn their ears away from the truth and, beside, and turn aside to fables. You look at how many people love videos that are about aliens and UFOs. Love it. Love it. Talk about certain things. They love it. But you know what? Aliens are nothing but demons. They're, they're just demons. That's all they are. And, and no demon have any control over a human being because God controls his people. God knows his sheep and they won't turn to anything else. So all of this thing, I'm going to, you know, all there, there, there's, a, there's a demon here and there's a, or, or there's an alien that the aliens are going to come and take over the world. No, they won't. No, 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 sir. And no, ma'am, they will not. And we need to teach the truth so that people can be set free. But, you know, people love the paranormal. I don't know why they love the paranormal and, and what do demons do. I mean, you want to really see some some hits. Look, you, put, you, you make a video on that because they love that stuff. Why? It does not get you any closer to Jesus. Jesus showed himself defeating them. And they said when he walked into town, Jesus, why have you come before your time? You know, he's, he was defeated. They, they weren't happy about him showing up. So you have to understand, we seek the truth. And the truth is in Jesus Christ and nothing else. And then it says, verse 5, but you be watchful in all things. So that means everything you see, watch and pray. Be watchful in all things. Watch and pray. What are you seeing? Well, we are actually seeing chaos in every area of life. We are watching. Now, parents have always killed their kids, and kids have always killed their parents, but not to the magnitude that we're seeing now. We are seeing the craziest thing we've ever, where, where there's no natural love. You know, they, they, will, they will show you videos of animals loving on their, on their cubs or their, or their babies. What's wrong with the humans? We were giving God's love for one another. Have love just fallen away? We don't have natural love for our offspring now? It said endure affliction. Endure those hard times. Endure. That means as you go through stuff, be patient in it, knowing that God is going to bring you out on the other side in his time. Endure it. Yeah, life gets hard. It gets hard, I tell you that. Life gets hard, and some people have it harder than others. And you know, those that have it really hard, those wonderful men and women that it seems like there's always something wrong going on in their life, it's because they can handle it. They can handle it. God says he don't put more, more on us than we can bear. Some people are, will, will, will crumble at, at, at any little trial. Others have big trials. Look at Paul. Look at the stuff Paul went through. Look, look, look at that crazy stuff he went through. Look at Peter. 
being thrown in prison and, and beaten and all these things, all the disciples, they were all, it, it, all of them were, were, were in one way or another mishandled, mistreated, and then murdered. We like to call it martyrdom when it's for Christ. But they were all treated bad. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. That means tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell them about a better way. Tell them it's not going to always be like this. Point them to heaven. Tell them. Do the work of evangelists. Bring them to Christ. Sometimes you may have to spend some money. Buy them a Bible. Buy them a journal, get them an ink pen, get them a highlighter, show them how to take notes, how to read the Bible. See, you, 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 got, to, you got to take some people by the hand when you are actually uh, taking people and doing the work of the evangelist. You're not just preaching Christ. You're showing them how to walk it out. And then it says, fulfill your ministry. What has God called you to do? What has he called you to do? That was, that's what you better be doing. What has he called you to do? If God tells you to take, take your money out of the bank, go over to another country and minister to the lost, you need to be ready to take your money out of the bank, go where God tells you to go, and go do what he said do. Do the work of the ministry. Fulfill your ministry. What does he call you to do? Maybe you can't do anything but pray. Then gather up some others who can pray and then start a little intercess intercessory ministry. Don't sit back and do nothing. The world is, is we, 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 are, we are like a minute to midnight. That's the doomsday clock that they've put up for us so we would know what time it is. Our time is short. We, I don't know when Christ is coming back. I have absolutely no idea, but I know it's soon. Because I see all the signs he talked about. We see everything I hear right now. And even in this country, our beloved America. I love my country. And we've seen so many things here that has changed. Oh my goodness, so much have changed. That I don't even hardly recognize this place. And I've been here all the time. You know, I'm watching our society changed so much and things being implemented that implemented that we've never even heard of before. No love. We, we, we just see so much going on. Absolutely no love. All of this, this killing and, and, and I don't know what's causing people to drive crazy on the roads. I just have no earthly idea. But even the way they get in the car and drive, no patience for the next person. No love. You cut somebody off, they might shoot you. They don't know if you're having some kind of uh, a medical event going on. They, they don't even care. The spirit of offense. Jesus said when he returned, will he find faith on the earth? Because there's none. It looks like it's just waning so fast that nobody seems to have any faith or, or oh, we're going to make it. We're going to make it because Jesus said he's coming back for his church. Are we excited about that? Verse six, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering. This is what Paul said. I'm at the end of my life now. I'm being poured off like a drink offering. I'm getting ready to leave this place. And you know, he was okay with it. He might've thought things were bad then. I don't know. I mean, the things that happened to him was so in, in, incredibly insane. And he might have said, oh, well, you know, we gotta be at the end because look at these awful things these people are doing to me. Because they did everything they could do to Paul. And it says, And the time of my departure is at hand. He knew the end of his life was coming. I have fought a good fight. Can you say that? I fought a good fight. Good fight. You may not have gone through the things Paul have gone through. But you may very well have done all kinds of things to help people, to bless people, to touch people's lives, to pray for people. You have probably done everything you could do to be a blessing to people. And he said, I fought a good fight. You know, I know I have too. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith and I know what's laid up for me. And some of you can say the exact same thing. You fought the good fight. You've kept the faith and you know what's laid up for you. It's 
a crown. We shall wear a crown. When it's all over, we shall wear a crown. We shall stand before the Lord and we will worship him in spirit and in truth. We'll worship him. We would show, we would, we would even the elders, the elders who have brought his throne now, it said that they cast their, their crowns in worship of him. They never get bored. The angels go around his throne worshiping worshiping holy 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 is the lord almighty they're worshiping him i can't imagine the beauty that is laid up for us we could take what's going on here because we know the final word is that we would be before christ he said father good fight i have finished the race i have kept the faith he finished the race you know, you know when you're racing, when you finish that race, you you know when it's through. You know when you know when you you have run, and you have run life well. You know when you've done it well. You know when you've put everything you had into Jesus Christ. You know when you've had to forsake some things for Him. You have to you have to give up some things for Him. That's okay. You know you've lost some friends for Him. Everybody He pulled away from you, it wasn't because He was hurting your feelings. It was because they couldn't go where God was taking you. They had to be gone. He had to pull them off of you. He had to separate you from them because what he had for you is so much greater. He cannot have you distracted by the things and the people of the world. Be glad and rejoice that you know Jesus because you know the greatest power there ever was. He created all things and by him all things were created. Think about that. And last of all, he says, finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness. The crown I was talking about. Which the Lord of righteous, the, which the Lord, the righteous judge, would give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearance. He's, he's, he's almost ready for us, y'all. We're almost ready to get out of here. Oh, what joy, what joy, what joy. I want you to be exceedingly blessed in this message. I want you to think about where God is taking you, what he's doing in your life. And I want you to do it with great joy because God is the, has a final say in all that happens to us. Amen.